All right, thank you for coming in. Um, my name is Nick, I'm from Germany. I came all the way just to talk to you guys about hypermedia and REST. Um, I'm a Ruby guy, so um, there's nothing special to tell about me, like I have a couple of gems, I have a couple of projects and stuff like that. Uh, if people ask me what I'm working, I usually say I'm a self-employed scientist. That means nothing, <laughs> but it sounds cool. And uh, so usually uh, companies hire me for um, doing like um, improvement on their software architecture. So I usually go there, write 10 frameworks, and then they kick me because I didn't write any application code. But then I publish the frameworks on GitHub and I get famous and can do talks in Rocky Mountains, which is cool. <laughs> so I'll stop talking about myself. I think you guys came here in order to get some rest. Got the wordplay? <laughs> All right, so we got uh, 20, uh, 27.8 minutes to go. I will talk a little bit about rest and about um, my view of the main constraints in rest. So who's using, who's doing a rest project here? Who, who did a rest API or, come on guys, come on guys. Who's using Rails? Who's using Facebook? This is impressive, three people. <laughs> All right, then I will talk a little bit about representations and documents, which is the same hypermedia and my own gem, which I'm gonna try to sell, it's called Roar. And uh, so, rest, that's representational state transfer. Interesting. So I took, what I took, did is, um, I took Roy, Roy Fielding's thesis, he's the author of rest, who read the thesis? This is impressive, like 10 people. Did you learn anything about REST from the thesis? Because I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, Roy, if this is on video. So the, 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 main, um, the main point about REST is in chapter five, which is about REST, in line one, REST is an architectural style for distributed hypermedia systems. So keep in mind, it's architectural style, and it's about distributed systems. The problem with architectural styles is you cannot um, simply write a gem, include it in your Rails application, and then it's RESTful. The problem is with architectural styles, you have to be you as the architect or as the developer. You have to worry about how do I introduce REST? How do I make my application RESTful? And I'm trying to, in my talk, I'm trying to um, help you guys um, getting on the right way about REST, because what Rails does is not really RESTful. I'm sorry. So REST is about machines. Basically, it's about machines talking to each other, like they ask things and they would answer with machine-readable answers. The center of REST is the resource. A resource can be just anything, like, uh, I don't know, maybe some beer representation or some news feed or um, the current, currently locked in user or whatever. And, sorry, I gotta drink some. Um, every resource in a REST system has a unique URL, so a network address which is identifying the resource. And you can manipulate that resource by using the uniform interface, that's get, post, put, delete, and it's, it's roughly defined what these operations do on a resource. And you can also manipulate resources using representations, that's the representational part of REST. So REST is basically sending and retrieving documents. Representations are documents, all right? I said, all right? There you go. All right, so REST, the REST approach, uh, the Rails REST approach is about, um, usually is about having a monolithic application. You got pretty URLs, they call it RESTful, I like that. And you use GET in order to um, retrieve the representation of models, maybe in JSON, maybe, maybe XML. And they also use get in order to make, so the resource is not only serving JSON, but also HTML in order to provide some user interface. And yeah, basically you use post to create or update models, um, so they do some kind of stuff like faking put requests and so on and so on and so on. The rest approach I'm trying to show today is about componentized applications. That's the distributed part. So you don't have one monolithic application, but you may have several separate applications. And you still got pretty URLs. So how cool is that? 
And I'm talking about real REST services, like you use get, put, post, delete, the uniform interface, all the operations HTTP gives us to, to manipulate resources. And usually a REST service is not supposed to provide HTML. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my, that's my impression about REST. And one crucial point about REST is that you use hypermedia in order to connect services. And this is something Rails didn't teach us. So in order to show you hypermedia a little bit, I got some imaginary system. It's called Burp. It's some beer ordering service. So maybe we got some order, and then we can browse beers, and then we can choose beers, put them in the order, and in the end, we'll say order, and the waiter will come and bring us beers. That's nice. By the way, Burp is the abbreviation for beer shop system using RESTful backend services and a separate presentation layer. I knew you're gonna like that. So let's see a typical REST session. Um, on the next slide, there will be HTTP requests. We, um, on the left side is the, is it left for you as well? Yeah. On the left side is the REST service, on the right side is the um, REST client, all right? So example, I do a get to, to a REST service and I, it, the request might also contain some document. This doesn't make sense to get, but maybe input and I get back some response or some document from the REST service. All right, good. So what if I get beers slash one? Usually I get back some JSON representation. So I'm using a simplified JSON version because uh, all the quotes and stuff, they make things more complicated. I, I guess you, you know what it is like. It's JSON for, for presentations. <laughs> So the Rails approach is like you allow get for getting resource rep representations and you allow, like you can do post requests to, um, oh, you still can read it. You can do post requests to manipulate a resource like, oh, sorry, to create a resource. So in this case, I'd like to create some new beers, uh, some new beer for my um, burp system. And um, after you post, you get some redirect telling you, hey, cool, you created a new beer and it's located at beers slash Jever. Who knows Jever, by the way? It's a good beer from Germany. You should try more um, beer from the other side of the world. <laughs> I like the IPA stuff that you guys have here. <laughs> nah. So, rest in, uh, in the Rails view is like get, post, put, delete, map to create, uh, show, create, update, and uh, delete, yeah. And so, this is basically CRUD, and so I say CRUD is not rest, rest is more. So let's have a look at some typical hypermedia-driven um, REST session, because you remember that uh, quote from Roy Fielding, he says, REST is an architectural style for distributed systems. So let's check out the hypermedia part of that. Again, I'm using the burp system. And um, the first step when doing a hypermedia system, like a real REST, RESTful software system, is um, you have, uh, you can, you should, like separate the front end and the back end services. So on the, on the left side, I have my graphical user interface, which is just a REST client, a client. And on the right side, I have my REST services. And um, another step in real RESTful systems is like you, you don't have to use one application as a front end, one application as a back end. You can even split up your back end into completely separated applications. They, you don't have to use one application for REST. You can use multiple and they, are interconnected using hypermedia. So let's start with a get. So I'm, I'm trying to get the order slash one. And I get back some JSON, like the typical stuff, ID, created at, and so on. And um, I put in some, some pseudo stuff. So I put in some hypermedia. So that's hypermedia. It's basically some kind of link and some kind of URL. So in order to proceed my order, I would use the proceed link, which is order slash one slash pay. So whenever I decide to pay my order, I would, I would send a put request to this URL. And to update my order, I would use the order slash one and I would do post re uh, put request on this URL. So I embed, sorry, um, I embed links in my representation. This is what we call 
I don't know how, how you pronounce it, like hate OS or whatever it's called. It's um, hypermedia as the engine of application state. So did anyone stumble upon that kind of term so far? Because <laughs> I think it's a funny abbreviation, but it says me nothing. So um, what I think about hyper, uh, hate, hate OS or whatever is um, to embed actions or links in your representations that make sense in the current application state. So proceeding, my, paying my order makes sense or um, updating my order makes sense, so I just put links in the order representation, all right? And um, hypermedia has different forms, so you can embed hypermedia in, in different ways. So the typical way is like, um, in, this is again some pseudo JSON, but it's a little bit more JSON-like. <laughs> Uh, the typical way is to, to have some links key in your representation, in your uh, two-dimensional representation. And, uh, well, links is an array of hypermedia uh, links pointing to some resources. Typically, a hypermedia link has a rel attribute and an href attribute. So the rel is, the pr is telling me roughly what to do, and the href is the URL. In XML, this looks like this. So you can also use XML as, um, for providing representations in your REST uh, system. But um, I did this talk a couple of times. Of course, for you, I improved it and threw out all the complicated stuff just to make it easier to follow. Because uh, in, the, in the first talk, I, did, I used XML as an example for representations, and people would kick my ass because nobody's using XML, obviously. Yeah, so let's go to JSON. All right, so keep in mind, Every hypermedia link in a RESTful representation has the rel attribute, in my examples, which is like the link semantic, proceed, update, items, whatever, like telling me the meaning, what, 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 what this resource is, is about, and then we got the resource URL. We are actually, actually um, requesting or sending a request. So how do I create a new order for my um, beer placement? Well, I would post to orders, and I can also put um, maybe some stuff in the, in the request um, document body, like um, the client ID or whatever, just so to provide some init initial values. And what I get back in the end is some enriched document telling me, okay, your order was created, and uh, there are several links already embedded in my uh, representation. But the main point here is, um, in a real hypermedia-driven system, my front end, knows one single entry point URL, nothing more. So we know one URL. In this case, this is HTTP colon slash slash orders. There is no more URL computation. For if I want to add an order, if I want to browse order, uh, sorry, if I want to add a beer, if I want to browse beers, if I want to place my order, I don't do any URL computation. So the REST client just knows one single entry point URL. So in my, in my eyes, this is one, one of the key criteria in order to make your system RESTful. And um, in, usually you have some, something called the self link, which is just um, um, a link pointing to the resource that just provided me the representation. So this is another best practice. I won't go into the details here, but this is uh, like um, uh, things you should do in your representations. So in my order representation, I, already, I have some um, link called the self link. I, I, I call it the clipboard link just so we can refer to it. And um, yeah, we got some other link called the beers link, which is pointing to orders slash one slash beers, and it's basically um, the link to all the items placed in my order, all right? So when I place beers in my order, I can look up these items in the beers link. So the icon for the beers link is like these three um, small glasses. We'll come to that in a minute. So now I created some order using post. What if I want to check my order, like the state, how many beers are in there, what's the total price, or whatever? Well, of course, I use get order slash one. And this will give me, like, the representation um, of my order. Sorry. And so please notice that there is also hypermedia in my, in my representation. So I got the link to, my, to, to the order itself, and I got the, links, the link to the beers, like how many beers are in my order. So if I follow this beers link from my REST client, I do order slash one, uh, get order slash one slash beers, and I get back, so this is a different uh, resource, like 
the resource is like telling me what beers are in my order. And I get back some empty list of beers, of course, because I didn't place any order right, right now. And I also have, again, hypermedia in that representation. And this is interesting. So we, we got the self link, which is pointing to the resource itself, boring. And we got the um, order link. Like this um, items collection is pointing to the order it belongs to. All right, so I could theoretically, theoretically go back to the order which contains these kind of items or these kind of beers. So how do I do, how do I add some beer or some, some, yeah, some item to my order? I do, in my, in my um, example, I do a post to orders slash one slash beers. And I just post um, some beer name, like using JSON again in the document body. Oops. Oh, I thought there is some, some more um, animation, but it, it got lost. So, you, so usually when I, when I post to some resource, it will redirect me to the newly created um, resource I just, I just um, tried to create. So okay, I posted two orders, I created a new order, and then I added some items. So let's reload the order, like getting the original representation again. It's again getting orders slash one, and cool. So there are all these properties we, we already had, and now the beers array contains um, an item, because I placed the Anchor Steam beer into that um, order. Is Anchor Steam any popular beer here? Because I had it in San Francisco, it's quite good. People are nodding. I couldn't find it on any menu here in the bar, so maybe it's not popular in Boulder. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this, um, at, let's look at our order representation after I placed a beer into it. It's a massive document and we are not gonna study all of, the, all of that stuff. So we still got the order ID, we got the client ID, then we got the beers array, we got links to the order, and we got links to the order beers. Oops. So we got the, the, the self link pointing to the order, we got the beers link pointing to the items in the order, and we got some new link. I call it the plus or, yeah, like the anchor steam link, which is pointing to, um, to the item I just pushed into the order. So this URL looks funny, right? Order slash one slash beers slash anchor steam. So what is, what is this uh, URL referring to? Is it referring to a resource? Of course it is referring to a resource because every URL in a REST system is a resource. But it's not pointing to the anchor steam article, it's pointing to the anchor steam beer put into the orders, into order number one, all right? So it's a matter of, uh, it's a matter of your choice how you expose uh, resources in your REST system. So yeah, that slide was massive. I need to take a short break. So do you know what, what's funny? Um, usually when I do talks, I'm pretty hungover. But yesterday, the United States of America, the greatest country in the world, by the way, uh, <laughs> saved me from getting drunk. And you know how this works? I forgot my ID at home. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, federal laws. <laughs> OK. so. So now we, we did create an order, we placed some items in it using hypermedia and uh, HTTP requests. So what if I want to remove the beer I just put into the order, the Anchor Steam beer, what if I want to remove it again, like, uh, um, yeah, making it, um, making my order um, empty again? I had a hard time finding, finding some picture for this slide, so I, I was looking for something like uh, a person talking to a waitress and saying, uh, no sorry, so I typed in no sorry in, on Google uh, image search, and what I got was this picture. <laughs> <laughs> no sorry. I'm, I'm not sure, what are they doing? Like, is it some kind of meditation, or? <laughs> anyway. So in order to remove that um, anchor steam from my order, I would use the uniform interface again, and I would do a delete on my um, order slash one slash beers slash anchor steam in, uh, just in order to delete this resource. And if I re delete this resource, it means take this beer out of my order, because I don't want it. I want local IPA stuff. 
<laughs> How many breweries you got here in Boulder? Like 10 or 11? All right, so let's try them tonight. All right, so I removed the beer from my order. Uh, let's check the order again. So I do another get on my order slash one. And well, this is fascinating. My beers, um, my beers array is empty. So this seemed to work. Okay, so this was a lot of um, this was a lot of um, HTTP requests, and it's no problem if you couldn't really follow, because I couldn't follow myself as well. But what I'm trying to what I was trying to point out is that I was posting to the single entry URL slash or, uh, orders HTTP orders sorry. Then I was doing a, a GET request to orders slash one because the post to orders told me, hey, you got a new order. It's located at orders slash one. So I do a GET request to, to get that order. In that, in that uh, representation of my created order, there was some link to the beers resource, and I did a GET just to, just to check out how many beers are in my order, and there were no, no beers at all. So that was boring. So I posted to the beers link which was embedded as hypermedia in my orders representation, I posted to create some, to add some new item to my order. I didn't do any URL computation at all. Then I reloaded the order again, and I already have the URL order slash one, and then I decided, okay, I don't want anchor steam, so I do a delete request to um, that strange long URL in order to take out the, um, the beer of uh, the, the anchor steam from my order. And I didn't do any computation of URLs in my, in my uh, whole system. So at any time, I could extract the URLs I need in order to do things. I could extract these URLs from my representations. And this is the point about hypermedia in, um, in REST systems. So it's like, it's like a little bit defining your API or exposing your API using your representations. And this is um, something that Rails didn't teach us. I don't know why. Because every time I'm, I'm refactoring some REST, um, some REST system, people do URL computations everywhere, and this, of course, makes your system buggy. So what if, what if you change? Uh, what if I decide, okay, the beers link is too long. I don't want the beer name in it. I want the ID in it. So you have to change all your front and all your client uh, code as well. And do we like that? No. Okay, so what I, I just showed a small workflow of my order system. What I didn't do was stuff like, I could also update my order sending a put request to orders slash one, or I could uh, remove all items at once when I do a delete request to orders slash one slash items, and so on. So this was the conceptual part, and I just have three more slides to show you how, um, how this kind of stuff can be done in Ruby, because it's a Ruby conf, not a REST conf. So I have, an, uh, I have a small gem called Roar, I already said the name. It's the abbreviation for resource-oriented architectures in Ruby. How cool is that? <laughs> it's at GitHub. A photo Nick, that's me. All right, so in my uh, gem Roar, I have some new abstraction layer. It's called representers. And um, so I, could bas I can basically define documents or representations by, using, uh, by deriving the, from the class representer. And then I can define plain properties like the name or the amount of alcohol or whatever you need in your document. And I can also use uh, the link method in order to provide um, hyper, to embed hypermedia in my document. And the cool thing is, so RAR is not working in Rails only, it's working in, uh, in, each, uh, in Ruby. But in Rails, you can use uh, the URL helpers in order to compute um, hypermedia links. So the, of, this is just another example, so you can, you can also do like, OK, thank you. You can also do like a nest representers and stuff like that. And you can, use, you can use link like multiple times in order to embed more links in your rep representation. And the funny thing is it's very simple to use, in, for, to use in Rails. So you just have the new method called represents, which tells my controller which representer to use. And then you use respond with, and it won't render the document using the typical stuff like 2JSON or whatever, but it will use my representer. And the same stuff works, um, so this was rendering, but you can also use representers for um, parsing incoming documents. This is done by using the representation method, which is just a parsed um, hash of, um, of my incoming document. And again, I use a representer to uh, render. So this is just a very brief overview. If you don't understand, no problem. Come to me, ask me, I can show you some code. The point about representers is it's framework agnostic. It's not tied to Rails or something. You can use it everywhere. 
It's, um, it's basically object-oriented documents, and it's, the point is it's bidirectional, so it's used for rendering and parsing representations, incoming and outgoing um, documents. And what I forgot on this list is like, um, you can also use your, you can use the representatives in the client layer, in your REST client, and you can use them in your uh, services layer, so in the back end. And um, we, we got some more stuff, for example, in, if you're using a representer in your client layer, you can do like a HTTP, you can extend your object dynamically, and it, you can do get request in order to get some, some document, and then you can modify that document, object oriented, and then you can send it back using a put request, so representers come with all that kind of stuff. And they also have some very good hypermedia uh, support, so you can extract hypermedia links from your documents using object-oriented approaches and not Rails or magic parsing and stuff like that. So if you go on the, the, uh, on the GitHub page, there is a complete example how to use that kind of um, new abstraction layer. If you like REST, if you want to go uh, further and learn more about hypermedia, I recommend you the following books, REST and Practice. Who read it? Anybody? Okay, two, two people. And I, recommend, I really recommend the RESTful Web Services Cookbook. So this is a great book. You can just skim over and read two pages and you're still, and you get enlightened and, on every page. So it's like showing you the tips and tricks of uh, REST design. And um, so Roy Fielding did a very interesting blog post. It's called Hyper, uh, REST APIs Must Be Hypertext Driven, where he claims that REST systems must be hyper, hypertext or hypermedia driven. That means um, no URL computation anywhere in the REST client, only hypermedia extraction and following these links. It's very funny, if you read the comments section, there are lots of people who disagree. So, uh, okay, two things I gotta ask. First, time, uh, first thing is, uh, if you guys are hiring and you wanna have some uh, handsome German programmer <laughs> for like maybe four, to, four months to one year in Boulder or in San Francisco or any other cool area, ask me, I would be interested. And uh, I'm planning to do some hiking uh, the next days, so if anyone ca could <laughs> uh, lend me some tent and cooking equipment, uh, it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so. Again, this is the link to my, uh, to my gem, the hypermedia REST thing, and I'm on Twitter, I'm a Podonix, so I just started using Twitter. Um, follow me or not, tell me that you like me or not. And um, so this was my talk about REST and hypermedia. I hope you got some little uh, insight, and I think we don't have time for questions. Or maybe there are no questions. One question. One question, in the front. Repeat the question. So when I do a post to create some resource, and it takes a long time to create that resource, how do I handle that? How do I handle that uh, timing issue? Right? I don't have any clue. <laughs> so this is. Um, I mean, there are of course a, a, a couple approaches, but um, how, how do you come up with that question? I mean, <laughs> you've done it. So this talk is about hypermedia and not about performance scaling. <laughs> so I'd like, to, I'd like to discuss that, but um, right now I don't have uh, like a magic uh, or a rule of thumb, so I'm sorry. Anything else? The guy in the blue shirt? Yeah. Authentication and stuff like that. Authentication is, again, <laughs> um, this is like a, one of the things I, I really hate about REST, that you have to do uh, like a stupid um, authentication stuff and you have to resend that authentication headers always in your uh, in each request. Is that what you're pointing to? No, uh, again, there are a couple of approaches, but this is not connected to hypermedia. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do it? Do you have any, uh, I mean, I would be interested in how, how you do it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. Then you're referring to a, res and res a resource, okay? Uh, 
And the resource is an actual glass of beer you can drink. I'm not sure how to drink HTTP colon slash slash beer slash one, but it's a resource. But if you're getting it, then you're getting a representation of that glass. And I wouldn't drink that representation because it's a document. Well. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You've been a wonderful audience. Yeah, I thought the whole example was you're placing an order with a waiter and the beer gets delivered to you, Charlie. So you will get that beer and you will need to drink it. Unless you forgot your ID. <laughs>